Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Saida and welcome to my channel if you are new here then please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon today i am going to explain a very short summary and critical analysis of the poem hawk roasting by ted hughes so without wasting our further time let's get started animals is not a new subject for ted hughes he would connect with nature through animals animals are like more than animals for him and their imagery is very important as it is his signature quality the poem starts the first stanza as i sit in the top of the wood my eyes closed in action no falsifying dream between my hooked head and hooked feet or in sleep rehearse perfect kills and eat in the first stanza we see that hawks would choose the topmost part of the trees where there is calm and composure in action here is not for laziness it's just a lull before the storm before the bird takes action there is no distraction in his thinking if he is sitting with closed eyes it doesn't mean he is dreaming or he is unaware the word or tells you that if he is thinking something he is doing some kind of rehearsal how to kill or even if you think he is sleeping he is thinking about killing perfect means with perfection no error or mistake in killing he would do now comes the second stanza the convenience of the high trees the air's buoyancy and the sun's ray are of advantage to me and the earth's ways afford for my inspection here poet wants us to look at the arrogance of the bird three agents of nature that are high trees air and sun are giving advantage to the bird air is very convenient as due to the thirst of the wind birds fly fourth agent that is giving benefit to the bird is earth because he is sitting at tallest place how arrogantly he considers everything around him are subservient to him serving tool to his living next comes our third stanza my feet are locked upon the rough bark it took the whole of creation to produce my foot my each feather now i hold creation in my foot again we see the arrogance hunting in the tone talent of this bird he says that it took the whole of creation to produce my foot there is simply no error as i sit my feet are locked up and each feather is designed perfectly as a lot of craftsmanship is involved in designing my body i have become a creator now as i hold creation in my foot This shows his godly claim and his height of arrogance. Next comes the fourth and fifth stanza. Or fly up and revolve it all slowly. I kill where I please because it is all mine. There is no sophistry in my body. My manners are tearing off heads. The allotment of death for the one path of my flight is direct. Through the bones of the living, no arguments assert my right. Sophistry means beauty and here it is used as a negative meaning. He says there is no complication in my body so I can kill where I want to. The one thing he is sure about is his ability to kill mercilessly tearing off heads. He allots death to people and there is no chance for the prey to escape. There is no arguments or doubts if he could get successful in killing his prey or not. because he is so talented and so powerful that he travels directly tearing off the bones of his prey now comes the very last stanza of this poem the sun is behind me nothing has changed since i began my eye has permitted no change and i am going to keep things like this in the last stanza hawk says that the sun is behind me and nothing has changed since he began his journey of killing It is something very ironical because when sun is behind you your shadow falls on everything he looks at his own shadow and there's no change he cannot see a change in the scene or his life and he is right in his claim as change is the only constant in nature but the hawk is so much absorbed into its arrogance that the shadow has blurred his vision he cannot see beyond it if he cannot see any change it means he is blind and it is his hamartia that makes him mortal flawed and not perfect he would not really see any change and not ready to change either the hawk appears to be megalomaniac in this poem who is delusional about his own power he feels that there is nothing falsifying about him as he is the supreme being 